surprised as, as Michael was by the severity of the fall? There was just really one key thing that moved the market today and that was China, China and China. It was all about China, the credit crunch that's happening over there and the liquidation that we're seeing in some assets because of that. If we have a look at this Chinese credit crunch, we've really seen a freezing up in terms of the interbank lending rates. That's a shy ball rate which is similar to the London interbank rate but for China and the seven day repo rate. And when you see interbank rates tripling in a space of two weeks, you know that there's a problem. Really it started off with the uh, Dragon Boat holiday which was on the 10th to the 12th of June and as you'd know coming up to a holiday lots of people take out money from the bank so there's an increased liquidity move and a need but the strange thing was we didn't see the People's Bank of China or the central bank over there injecting liquidity in fact they held back liquidity and that saw rates absolutely soaring now usually when we do see interbank rates absolutely soaring like this what it means is a loss of trust banks won't lend to each other because they think one is going to topple over or that there's a problem in the system so obviously markets have quite jittery at the moment. The other thing is that the, the central bank is probably sending quite a strong signal that it's sticking to its targets in terms of money growth as well as in terms of credit growth and what that's resulted in is massive volatility first of all in the interbank lending rates and then secondly in the markets. So if we have a look at the overnight rates on Friday we actually saw a fall of almost 5%. That's a massive one day fall to just under 8.5%. But today during the Asian session we've seen fluctuations between 6.1% to 9.1% for this rate. So these are massive fluctuations that we're seeing in the interbank lending market over in China and then of course the impact on the markets on the Chinese Shanghai Composite. The banks absolutely tumbling and we're actually seeing the Shanghai Composite down by a massive four and a quarter percent at the moment. Just having a look at the Shanghai Composite and exactly what the impact has been. This is just a one year chart for China and you can see just in the month of June that massive tumble that we've seen. We're actually seeing the Shanghai Composite now below that key 2000 point technical level and you can see now there's really nothing here until we test the December lows of last year. But if I just bring this up to maybe a 10 year chart instead just so you can see how low we are and really you can see that we're pretty close to the lows that we saw during the global financial crisis for China. So obviously with the Australian market having such a strong weighting towards that material sector we did see the material stocks being smashed and really keeping a close eye on China. Unfortunately it was very messy on the Chinese stock market today and the Australian market down as well. So Julie just maybe to, for people who aren't entirely across um, the interbank lending rates, the repo rates and so forth. Why should your average Australian investor be concerned about how much the level at which banks in China are lending to each other? I mean, why, why, should, why should we care? Well, back during the global financial, when it was about the LIBOR rate, it was more about uh, a contagion that we were worried about. But I guess in terms of China, what we're most worried about, first of all, is in terms of the material space and the ability to be able to buy commodities, because obviously with the interbank lending rates freezing up, the banking system freezing up, there's not a lot of money moving around in China. So that's going to have an impact in terms of the demand for commodities and also possibly liquidation of commodities as asset markets. For. And I think that's really what you saw quite strongly in the gold space today. You saw liquidation because we are seeing asset markets falling. It really started last week with that massive uh, federal, federal Open Market Committee, so the FOMC meeting and Ben Bernanke signalling uh, the end to quantitative easing in mid-2014. And then of course added into it the world's second largest economy, seeing uh, this, the troubles in terms of interbank lending certainly, uh, certainly not helping in terms of the volatility on asset classes. So really two things that we're seeing, concerns around demand because China is a massive player in terms of the global market, especially in terms of commodities and second liquidation from the volatility um, that we are seeing in asset markets at the moment. Stock, I mean, do, we, do you see this being a, a long term issue, particularly this lapsed policies? I guess if you have a look at AMP and the reasons for investing in a stock like this in a company like this, you really get leverage to the equity markets. It's got a strong brand. It's got a strong distribution network through its planners. Um, I guess some of the risks of investing in a company like this are from uh, the, the claims experience, um, new, uh, policies lapsing as well as new business coming in through the door. And if we have a look at AMP's share price today, it was down by just under 13%. And that really signals a lot of these factors were important 
place today. First of all, we saw that profit uh, warning coming through on the back of the claims experience. There's been more claims in the area of income protection as well as life insurance. There's been more claims lapsing. And also it's a question of pricing risk. I mean, this is a business that insurers are in and it does look like it's been a competitive environment and maybe insurers have been a little bit slow at repricing risk because they may be less competitive in the marketplace. So I guess just re-evaluating AMP as a business and then added into the mix was the shakiness that we saw in equity markets and because mm -hmm. of AMP's exposure to the equity markets and being a leveraged play on the equity markets, we saw the share price taking another fall. So down by 12.9%, not good seeing a profit warning but also just some question marks on how it's been pricing risk and whether we're going to see any 